Welcome viewers back to the dragster shop in transmission. Uh, yep, as you can tell, this 98 Blazer is back in the shop. Uh, if you watched my earlier videos, well, before we get into this, uh, hey guys, click that subscribe button to my channel. And right beside that, there's a little notification bell. Click on that. Click all. And that way you'll be notified of other videos when I post to my channel. Um, you know, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, ask questions, you know, whatever you want to do, share it. Anyways, all right, back to the job. If you watched any of my earlier videos uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I had two, vi two videos on, the, uh, on this Blazer. Uh, the four-wheel drive was not working properly. And I ended up replacing all the vacuum lines and uh, uh, testing the module and the transfer case, this, that, and the other. And I uh, got all that fixed and all that good stuff. Well, now, uh, it's been here for a couple days. I, I just got to it this morning. Um, why was it here? Hold on. Uh, my mind just drew a blank. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, uh, the water pump is bad. Uh, and possibly the uh, clutch fan. What it was doing is it was squealing real loud. Uh, here's the old assembly. And uh, I just decided to take the unit off, to take it off as a unit because I'm putting a, another fan and uh, clutch and water pump on this vehicle. Uh, so I went ahead and pulled the radiator out. And it's pretty dirty in there. Go ahead and drop the lower. I don't know if you call it a skid plate or not because it's made out of plastic. But uh, those of you that own one of these Blazers or S10s know what I'm talking about. It's a little cover that goes on the bottom here. Covers the, well... I got my catch pan down there, but right back there, I threw it back there once I took it down. It's got uh, three 15 millimeter headed bolts on all, on both sides, so that's a total of six bolts, and then that plastic cover just drops right down. Now, for those of you that still have your oil filter down there, and all those lines and everything, uh, you'll have to disconnect the oil cooler lines from the radiator here and here and like I say um, I don't this vehicle was in the shop several years ago the actual oil coiler lines were leaking as they tend to do on these vehicles they're very expensive to replace and I'm going to tell you something if you buy if you want to keep your oil filter in the same location that's fine I don't blame you however cheap oil lines are not going to last very long at all and they're going to start leaking it's best to go ahead and spend the money once buy the really good ones i took them off of this vehicle and i called up summit racing and at the engine block where the oil filter would normally go uh there you need to nipple and i'm i'm backtracking here several years i did not do a video of that I don't even think I, had, I didn't even have a YouTube channel back then. Uh, but you can buy an oil filter nipple that screws up in the block where an oil filter would normally go. And the oil filter you want to use, uh, is right there. Cause I wrote it down with a Sharpie for the oil changes. So if you use a AC Delco, you want a PF47 or a federated brand PG111F. That's a little narrower. You'll understand what I'm talking about if you do this change, this conversion. Uh, I chose not to buy new, uh, to, we just chose not to put new lines, new oil filter Old location lines, cooler lines, and all that. Just do away with them because they're expensive. And 
I plumbed in a temp gauge and it was only dropping the oil temperature like 15 degrees anyway. So I, there's no serious off-roading going on with this vehicle unless we get a little bit of snow or something like that. Now you guys that are out there off-roading these blazers, you know, jacking them up and big tires and suspension work and stuff. I do strongly recommend that you at least use the factory oil coiler that's in the radiator here. Okay. Uh, because you're running your engine a little harder, well, probably a lot harder than what this lady's doing with this blazer. All right, so the radiator's out. Uh, probably going to clean it. Uh, it might even get another one. I'm not exactly sure, but I noticed there's that. If any of you seen this in your blazer where your radiator looks like it's been cut right here, you know, it does look like it's been cut. I don't understand what's going on because it's on the bottom, too. It's weird. It's the first time the radiator's been out of this vehicle that I'm aware of. So, that's very odd because it doesn't have it over here. Looks like... Uh, I don't know about that. So, one other time, as the name of the channel, Dragster Shop and Transmissions, I do rebuild transmissions here. And... Uh, one other time this vehicle was in the shop, um, I had put uh, an external transmission cooler on it. Uh, uh, I can't remember why. I did not rebuild the transmission in this vehicle. Oh, I serviced it, and I felt like the uh, oil cooler might be leaking. I mean, the tranny fluid cooler might be leaking in the coolant or vice versa. So I opted to eliminate it. And that's why if you look on the radiator lines, it's uh, the radiator line itself, you'll see where I just left them hanging. And I was wondering if in time we would see any coolant or what have you come out of these tubes, which we never did. So, but I had plumbed in a uh, really nice uh, cooler, had to grill out and everything. <laughs> And plumbed in a cooler. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's a big cooler. It's definitely more than enough to handle what this setup has. Uh, okay. Uh, so one other thing I found, too. If you look right there, I've pretty much reached a point now. We're going to have to pull, the, pull all this stuff off the top to uh, replace the lower intake gaskets. Uh, now that I got a good look at it, I even see some antifreeze. It's kind of, well, you can't see it on camera, but kind of got a greenish tint to it there and right there. So these intake gaskets are leaking. And saw a little residual in the radiator. Uh, I know some of you say radiator, but if you look at how it's spelt, there's, it's not R-A-I-D, it's R-A-D. But there's a little bit of some black in there, so that's oil, engine oil. So, this job just got a whole lot bigger. Anyways, if you notice, the alternator's gone. Uh, while I was removing the water pump and fan assembly, I noticed that there was some excessive oil on the front of the engine. And so I went ahead, and you've got three 9 sixteenths. Well, you've got two 9 sixteenths bolts there. And then here is the factory stud to hold the alternator bracket assembly on there. Uh, go ahead, if you're trying to take the water pump and fan off together, take the nut off the stud, and then take a uh, 12 point, it's an impact socket really, quarter inch drive socket. And go ahead and unscrew it out of the head. It should come out of your vehicle. This one came out pretty easy. But uh, it runs right through here. Like I said, this fits really well on there. And it fits really good, so it'll come right out. You don't have to have some special star socket unless you actually have one. Great. Put it on there. Use it. But anyway... But there's your alternate, there's the back side that bolts up against the head of the alternator bracket. 
and right there. And one thing I noticed on this vehicle when I was uh, taking the alternator wiring loose, uh, somebody had uh, uh, there's a plate that runs right here from this bolt to this bolt. It's a flat metal plate. It's kind of like a bracket. And I'll show you up here on the vehicle what it does. Right there's your plate. Like I said, what it does is it comes back here and it's the bracket to hold your heater core hoses. All right. Well, the reason I'm telling you this is because they had the charging wire run off the uh, battery post right here. They had it uh, sandwiched uh, in here. So it was sandwiched in here in that plate. And then, of course, you have your plug-in uh, for the gauge or what have you. And uh, so it was pretty tight. And you can see where right there, just done a number on the uh, wire. So I don't know if it hurt the wire or not. Obviously, I haven't gotten that far. So I'll be checking that. So anyway, then you have your 916 bolts that uh, hold on the water pump just like most of your small block Chevys and V6s and uh, like I said once you get the alternator and bracket out of the way um, you're you know you're pretty much golden at that point so this wire here runs to the battery post on the alternator and so that'll be a 13 millimeter nut Okay, so, all right, well, I don't want to make this video too long, so, uh, oh, and one other thing is, too, I'm probably going to do an AC delete, the uh, owner just wants to drive this vehicle for in the winter time and occasionally during the summer to keep it going, um, so they don't really need air conditioning, and it needs a lot of work, there's a leak in the system somewhere, um, when I cracked the line loose, I think I cracked this one loose first. There was nothing in here, not even air. So there's been a definite leak somewhere, and looks like somebody or maybe even me, I might have put a dye test in it and just never found where the dye was coming out. So I'm not going to worry about it at this point. Uh, so they do make an AC delete pulley bracket, pulley and bracket for the AC compressor, so you can run the same length uh, drive belt, serpentine belt, whatever you want to call it. So uh, that's that's kind of good news. It's a little expensive, local parts store here. It's a little over $54, but you can get rid of a lot of stuff here. Um, so, which I'm going to have to take all this off anyway to fix that oil leak. But I have to discuss it with the owner. See if they want. She wants to go that far. Uh, I kind of hope she does, but then again, I don't really, because I've already got. I kind of hope she does because I don't want to have to take all this stuff off again next week when it starts puking out more oil and coolant, and you know, because that's how things happen for everybody. And uh, so, there you go. On the other hand, I don't want to have to do it. Gonna take all that stuff off. Yep. So, wasn't too too long ago. I had to replace the upper intake manifold on this thing. I think I replaced it. No, I had to replace the spider injection. So I had the upper intake off. Yeah, that's what it was. And uh, it wasn't showing. From what you can see, because you know the GMs, they like to shove everything they can on top of these engines and in front of them and beside them. And you guys know. Uh, but anyway, all right, guys, I'm rambling. I'm going to get off here. It's going to take forever to load a 15-minute video. But once again, guys, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Click all, and that way you'll see my other videos. So once again, thanks for watching, and um, leave a comment below. Thank you.